uh, that, I think that's what people forget is that people will hear it. There are still people who are, you know, love the tape cassette, love the cassette culture, love the, they, yeah, I still have a tape deck, I have two tape decks, you know. It's a, it's a sort of, it's an, it's an aggressively anti-consumer statement in a weird way. It's like, you know, hey, I, you know, I, I, I want you to hear this music because of course I do. If I'm a musician and I want to get, you know, I want people to listen and tell me what they think, et cetera, et cetera. You know, maybe I want to make a little money, but I put it out on tape. <laughs> In 1962, the Philips company created the cassette tape, a smaller, more compact and portable version of its predecessor, the reel-to-reel -reel tape. Its birth ushered in a new era in the world of audio recording. Not only was the tape compact and portable, but for the first time, recording was made available to the average consumer, making the cassette tape one of the first mediums to allow consumer interaction. Recording of, uh, you know, people just like singing, um, horribly dubbed cassettes like this, the Rolling Stones, Some Girls. Um, it also has a few White Snake, White Snake songs on the B-side for some reason. Um, but uh, also um, a, lot of, a lot of church services, oddly enough. Um, like these are just like church services from the 70s, um, which are really strange to listen to. Um, and sometimes you just find things that you like literally can't explain. Um, yeah, I, I, I think you don't get that kind of uh, democratization of, of popular music until the tape. And then you get the blank tape that comes out, people go, oh my God. You know, I can do whatever I want. Yeah, it's great. It's a, it's a, it's about freedom. I think it's about, you know, anybody can, anybody can be a musician. That's important. Yeah, I think, I think it's, a, it sort of goes the same way. It's that people, people are sharing music that they're really passionate about. That they, they put on a mixtape, and then, um, as they, they'll share that music with their friends or family or whoever. And that's, it's music that they really care about and that they feel like that person that they're giving it to will also really care about. And I think it sort of goes into the same thing where standard, like, top ten hit people aren't gonna, if they're burning a CD, it's, it's just whatever, whatever's popular right now. They're burning probably the whole CD and just saying, here, listen to this in your car. But people with, like, mixtapes that are burnt, they're, they're really good looking at it. They're, they're finding the songs they want on there. They're, they're figuring out the sequence they want. They, they make their own cover art half the time. I know I've done a lot of mixtapes where I've, I've made my own cover art. I've, I've spent hours sequencing all the songs together just so that they flow perfectly. Despite their portability and user-friendly style, there were a number of flaws with the cassette tape. Like the vinyl records, cassettes wore out and lost their fidelity over time. In addition, tapes were known to melt if left in the sun or break from overuse. But to some users, however, this fragility and physicality is exactly what made tape so captivating. Um, I think mainly it's like a mix between nostalgia and, um, well, that's definitely the number one factor actually is nostalgia because uh, the people who grew up with tapes are the ones who are, you know, old enough to be releasing music on like a commercial level now. As far as they, they 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 always still kind of just feel like you're finding something when you when you when you get a tape, um, you know. Even though like it's a tape that's 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 new, where you know just you always kind of feel like you're digging up, you know, something that 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 no one's listened to in a really long time. Yeah, it's like it, there's a lot of like nostalgic quality to it, like people like like the way and like because you can kind of like hear the tape hum as it like plays through, so it like adds other sounds and like. It's just a different like process, you know what I mean? Like side A, side B, and having to rewind. Like it's a more deliberate process listening to a tape. Um, because it's not like you just pop it on on your on iTunes. It's like you have to like put it in and like rewind it and then play it and flip it over and play it again. It's uh, sort of 
uh, DIY and punk and, you know, certain circles, whatever you want to call it, lo-fi, have sort of adopted the tape is because there is that physical aesthetic. There's a sort of a homegrown feeling to that. There's a very easy medium to master. You know, you can uh, you can distribute tapes very easily. You can give them out cheaply. You know, it's a... Uh, it's so difficult to say that something is, is a dying medium. I think, uh, you know, it, it, it might die a sort of technologically obsolete sort of death. It might die like a, the tape they said that is, it might die sort of like a, um, like a, a usability sort of death. But I don't, it, it can't really die the spiritual death that something like the 8-track did because, or that the CD eventually will. Because it's, you know, it's not going to be replaced by anything that's, more like a tape, you know what I mean? But you know, what really is more like a tape than a tape? You've reached the peak there, I think. 